Dear subscribers, as you know, we shared many information for you, and we are studying very hard to find current news for you. However, I cannot use this channel for future. Please follow our new channel called As Daily News Report and watch our video to support us. Link in description. Also, you can reach the video we shared on Daily News Report by clicking on the top right button. We highly recommend watching, subscribing and sharing. We will continue to share some news on this channel where we take precautions against some situations for future. Thank you for supporting us. In March, I think that we're a nation that's in complete denial of what actually happened uh, in March. Uh, and as the governments respond by more money printing of money that we do not have, uh, it's going to uh, set off a, a hyperinflation, I think, globally, because the entire world's on the exact same debt-based fiat Ponzi scheme. Um, and this is why precious metals, especially silver, are such a vital uh, way of protecting your wealth, because every time they print more money, it destroys the purchasing power of not only our savings, but also our income. People don't realize that. Um, and that's why we're going to see it most uh, noticeably in, in our food inflation first uh, and then just the cost of living overall. It's going to make it very difficult for people to keep up as the government continues to print money and pay off, uh, you know, all the insiders that, uh, you know, obviously have the ears of our politicians. So silver is really, I think, the only way of defending your wealth uh, against the, the money printing that's going to happen globally. Well, and the good news is now we're actually seeing metals prices rise and that's getting the attention of a lot of people because I think before it was a lot of talk, at least that's what people mm -hmm. felt. And now seeing the rising prices confirmation that, hey, something is really happening and, uh, you know, guys like us who've been talking about precious metals for years have a little more credibility like, hey, you know, <laughs> this is actually happening and the things in the economy are actually setting in and they're affecting the price of gold and silver. Now, before we get into silver too deeply, or maybe we'll start here, uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on why silver, because you're someone who isn't really a fan of gold for that matter. Most people are a fan of gold, no. and as a derivative, they like silver as well because of its correlation and its relationship. But with you, mm -hmm. Chris, you, you like silver only. So yes. let's start there. Sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, with the way I look at the global landscape and what you and I have been talking about for well over a decade is that the world is literally run on a fiat Ponzi scheme that they create money out of thin air. It's all debt based. So every dollar that comes into existence is had, there's a dollar's worth of debt. And because the system is based off of a fractional reserve system, we have to create more debt every year in excess of the debt and interest accrued the year before or we have a deflationary crash. And the people that own and control the system do not want that. So they will always continue to print more money that we don't have. Uh, and it's a subtle way of in, uh, stealing wealth from the average people out there. You know, when every time that they print a trillion dollars out of thin air, you and I and all the other people that we know have to work tremendously to create that wealth. And some Momo at the Federal Reserve and the Treasury prints that up and pays off their banking buddies and the military industrial complex and the media you know, and the corporations and all that other stuff, they, they all get that money there, but we are the ones that have to go out and kind of uh, create that. So when you realize that the whole, our very currency is a debt-based fiat Ponzi scheme, you know, so too is a derivative of the stock market, the bond market, the real estate market, all the other asset classes out there that you look at, they're all a derivative of that debt-based Ponzi scheme. Well, if, the, if we're into a currency crisis where the actual dollar itself is, is de declining in value as they're printing more and more of it, there's very few real places to put your wealth outside the banking system. It's not real estate, it, you know, because without, you know, 30-year mortgages at 2%, you know, what's your house worth, you know? And if the local governments get desperate and raise your property taxes, it's even a harder place to store your wealth. Um, and when you get down to it, there's only commodities. And then when you look at commodities, uh, not all the commodities are easily stored. I mean, food is a commodity, oil is a commodity, but how are you going to store, you know, millions of dollars worth of oil or, you know, food and stuff. So it brings it back down to the precious metals uh, because, you know, even the larger metals like copper and ore, you know, iron ore, 
it's too hard to store thousands of dollars worth of it. You know, I think it's like $5,000 for a ton of copper. You can't store that, which brings it down to gold and silver, right? And then once you get down to the gold and silver, you realize that gold is overvalued relative to silver. I'm not saying gold's worthless, but why would you own a puddle, a little teeny coin of gold, when you could have 76 ounces of silver that has all the same qualities as uh, as gold, as a monetary metal, as you know, uh, you know, a form of, of of divisible metal that you can do. But silver has 10,000 industrial uses that gold simply does not have. Gold is really just a gaudy, you know, metal that's used for jewelry for the most part and, and stored as and stored as money. Um, but when you realize that silver has all those same qualities, the the in fact it has more uses as money throughout the ages as silver has been always been the monetary uh, money of the people, because gold is too soft and ductile. It's not really good for coins and, uh, you know, to, to, you know, to trade and stuff. Um, and, you know, it's used for jewelry. But our way of life is impossible without silver. You know, you think about all of our technology, the, the electric cars that are coming, the solar power, it's got antimicrobial, it's got anti-cancer uses. Uh, you know, certainly all the high-tech uh, you know, high tech companies are all silver intensive and all the tech companies and silver is to me the king of all metals. I think gold has had this reign for 5,000 years as this kind of like preeminent, uh, you know, m money to be hold by the, you know, the very wealthy, but that's who owns all it all now. I mean, Goldman Sachs, uh, the banksters, the, you know, the criminal elite, the people that own and control the system, they own gold and they've suppressed silver. So I think silver is going to lead to the largest transference of wealth ever as the world realizes that these currencies in itself are bad. Uh, the stock market and the bond market and the real estate market where most people have their wealth uh, are, are dangerous at best and that they're going to go down Exeter's pyramid into gold and then they're eventually going to figure out silver. And I think that once people get to understand the silver story, it's a no brainer situation. Like why wouldn't you want to have silver? Even as insurance, you know, just, to, just even if I'm wrong, just a little portion of your wealth in physical silver, I think is a smart thing to do. Right. No, I, I like that. Um, now let's talk about this con industrial component of silver. And that's a big thing for people. 60% of silver's usage is industrial. And so does that mm -hmm. bother you at all? And, you know, maybe get, shed some light on why I know it doesn't bother you. Why right. doesn't it bother you? Well, number one, just recently, I mean, the mining uh, globally has dropped off 50%. We've actually reached peak silver in 2015. So that means every year since 2015, uh, we've been made pulling less and less silver out of the ground because it's a depleting resource. Um, but most recently, over this past year, uh, Mexico and Peru are completely offline mining silver. And those are the number one, number two silver miners in the world, mainly because of COVID. Um, so I'm not really worried about the industrial demand drop off of the global economy, mainly because silver is used in all these high tech, you know, high tech uh, industries that regardless uh, what comes after this, we know that there's going to be more tech. And, and if there's any government stimulus, they're going to use it for green energy uh, projects, you know, either solar or electrification or whatever. And that's going to be even more silver intensive. So we're in a declining silver uh, production globally. Uh, accentuated by uh, this COVID thing, shutting down a lot of the big silver mines in, in uh, uh, Mexico and Peru. And for the, you know, for going forward, it's, it keeps having more and more uses. Like, you know, 10 years ago, we really didn't have a solar power industry. We didn't have electric cars. Uh, you know, the, even the tech industry, we, you know, cell phones are not even that old. Uh, you know, I remember getting my first cell phone, you know, not, not a decade ago. And, and now we're using silver in such small quantities uh, that even for these big companies like Apple and Samsung or, you know, Google that are going to be, or Tesla that are using all the silver, it's used in such small quantities that it doesn't really reflect the overall, uh, you know, price thing of, of, of what these companies are using it for. If, you know, if a, an Apple computer may use a tenth of an ounce of silver, if silver goes from you know, ten dollars up to a thousand dollars. It doesn't reflect all that much in the overall cost of the company uh, of the product. So the companies are going to suck it up, no matter what it is. What I am most concerned about is at some point, and I think it's going to happen this September, more people are going to ask for delivery uh, on physical silver uh, than the the market's going to be able to demand. Uh, there's a huge upswing in um, in physical demand uh, from the PSLV, which is Eric Sprott's uh, SLV ETF. 
I think he's you know looking to get a billion ounces of silver. There isn't enough out there for that. Um, and I think the more that people realize that this is a death spiral of the dollar, there's very few places to go and that the big money is going to move in. Uh, I think it's an absolute uh, eye of the hurricane for uh, silver investors to get ahead of this curve. That's powerful. Now, uh, you mentioned something, you know, silver having the same and better usage than gold. But you think the reason why we're not using gold is because it just got priced out of the the industrial market. So arguably, mm -hmm. couldn't silver price itself out ultimately? And would there be another replacement for silver if need be? I mean, I, I, yeah, potentially, but at what price? And, you know, we're sitting at $30 silver. What price would that happen? $1,000 silver? I'll be more than happy to ride that all the way up there. I mean, that, that's a huge thing. Um, you know, there's some talk about graphene being more useful. But right now, graphene, I mean, it's, it's thousands of dollars per gram. You know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a huge uh, expense just to do that. And, yeah, maybe over time that they're able to do it over – uh, you know, make it more efficient. But, you know, quite honestly, silver has unique properties that will never be replaced. I mean, it's literally the king of all metals. It has the most versatile commodity in the world, not just metals, uh, the, except for oil. Oil is the only other commodity that has more uses for humanity. So it is an absolute vital commodity that we have been treating as just garbage. I mean, we, we, it's, it, we treat it as if it's less than a, a, an ounce of a, a pizza. I mean, it's ridiculous to me that we have silver so cheap, considering, you know, how many tons of earth that you have to move and, you know, refine it and refine it. I mean, it's a noble metal and it's the only one that isn't in four digits. Uh, you know, all the other noble metals are all trade at four digit uh, prices and sil here's silver at $30. Uh, it's a huge opportunity for people who can recognize it. Mm. Yeah, I love it. Uh, so does the gold silver ratio mean much to you? Uh, you know, a lot yeah. of people are talking about 30 to one uh, gold to silver and, you know, Bank of America has already put a $3,000 price target on uh, gold. So mm -hmm. uh, 30 to one puts silver at a hundred bucks, which is pretty exciting considering where we're at. But I know you think it might go a lot higher than that. But what are your thoughts on gold and silver as it pertains to the ratio? Well, I think since you and I have been talking, I mean, we, we, it's gold and silver ratio has been going anywhere from 70 up to 120. Uh, the spring where gold was really uh, bought up by the main central banks of the world. You have to realize most of the big banks in the world, you know, China, Russia, and all these other countries who are trying to worry about the dollar, they've been buying up gold, but they've been completely ignorant of the whole silver story. Uh, so the gold to silver ratio has uh, steadily gone up. And now ever since, uh, you know, silver's caught wind over these past couple of weeks, uh, the gold to silver ratio has collapsed, but it's still relatively high. I think it's at one to 75. Here's one thing I want your subscribers to know. Gold to silver comes out of our ground at a one to nine ratio. For every one ounce of gold, there's only nine ounces of silver. So silver is a very rare metal. Like as much as you would think that gold is very rare, silver is just as rare. Now, historically, it's, it's been a 1 to 16 ratio. Um, basically, you know, a couple hundred years ago, that was what the mining ratio was. Then it dropped to 1 to 12, and now we're down to 1 to 9. As the silver stockpiles, and I mentioned before that the silver um, peak silver happened in 2015, it's only going to get exact, you know, worse. It's going to keep dropping as silver becomes more rare relative to the gold that comes out of the ground. But the way I look at it is if it's at a 1 to – uh, you know, 90 ratio, which is what it was, you know, a week ago, regardless of what price of gold does, I'm not saying gold is overvalued, you know, in the global economy, I'd rather own gold relative to any other digital illusion of wealth out there. You know, if you're, if you're measuring your wealth based off of the digits on your phone, you're in deep trouble when this all goes down. Um, but regardless of whatever the price of gold does, I think silver is going to outperform gold at least 10 to one as the gold to silver ratio collapses to at least the mining ratio, what it comes out of the ground, but it actually gets worse than that because the above ground stockpiles of gold, you have to think about it, all the gold that's ever been mined in the world has been treasured and stored and, and, and you know, uh, kept there. All the silver that's been mined has been basically used as an industrial commodity that we don't really, really care about and the silver stockpiles have declined to the point now that there's more identifiable gold ounces above ground than there is silver. So I make I can make a case that gold to silver ratio can drop to single digits, if not parity, 
And I think that's where the big opportunity for people who recognize this, just on a ratio basis, that silver has far more upside potential than owning any gold. So you mentioned Sprott's account, uh, PSLV, the allocated mm -hmm. silver. Um, you know, do you talk about the problem, if you would, maybe of someone wanting to get exposure to the price action of silver and buying something like an SLV ETF? Is that something you would recommend to anybody? No, I don't want any digital illusions of wealth. I wouldn't recommend anything that I don't do. I only stack physical silver. Um, yeah, I mean, Eric Spot's a good guy, but you know, all of his uh, all of his silver stored at the Royal Canadian Mint. The Royal Canadian Mint's owned by the Queen of England, so um, you know, all she would have to do is just sign a decree, and you know, Eric's out his silver, and so is everybody else. Uh, my real concern is the SLV, uh, where most people uh, invest in. And that I don't think that they have the physical silver to back up all the shares that they have. I mean, it just, it, it makes no sense to me that they're able to add tens of millions of ounces of physical silver when I know how tight the, the real physical silver market is because of what I do with uh, my silver shield and Golden State Mint. Um, it's very difficult to source silver, uh, much less huge amounts of it. In, and, and I think that a lot of people are going to end up finding out that this digital silver that they have is really just that, just digital silver, not the real thing. And when we get into a currency crisis, that's all that's gonna matter is how the, you know, if you have physical silver or not, everything else is just gonna be a digital illusion of it. And, that, and that's, the, that's the real risk that I see globally. You know, Chris, we saw a really exciting move, I think with gold over the last month or so. Uh, going through its all-time high, right, and you know, going over two thousand dollars, and then silver hitting thirty dollars here, uh, very material considering it's just been in that in the teens for the longest mm -hmm. time. You know, having a real hard time going over eighteen, and and then you know, hitting its head on the wall of twenty-one seventy-nine, and then obviously going right through that. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's talk about the move we've seen. I know oh, I, I don't like to focus on price too much, but I think this quick move we've seen is something that I think people should get used to uh, because yeah. I think we're got, we are going to see big moves and I fear that people are going to sell too early because they're not used to seeing the metals go up. So maybe you could yes. speak to that a little bit. That's a, an excellent point. I'm so glad that you brought that up. Um, the way I try to talk to my people on the, goal, uh, the greatest truth they ever told on YouTube uh, is to recognize that this is not something that you're getting into just to make more dollars. The reason why you're getting into silver is because we're afraid of the dollar's purchasing power going forward. And I constantly use the Venezuelan example. Venezuela obviously has had a huge hyperinflation, but in 2010, a, uh, it took 60 bolivars to buy one ounce of silver. And if you were a uh, Venezuelan and you saw that Chavez was there and you had this socialistic president that was going to print money out of thin air and destroy the purchasing power, um, and you bought silver at 60 bolivars and say silver went up to 600 bolivars, right? You'd have been like, oh, I made 10 times my money. Um, but had you sold at $600 bolivar, you would be devastated because do you know what the cost of one ounce of silver now is in bolivars? 7.2 million bolivars like if you sold at 600 bolivars and 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 now you would have to come back with 7.2 million bolivars to buy the same ounce of silver you would have been devastated um and that's what i'm not i i don't think that we're going to have that dramatic of a, a of a, an example in the united states because the united states is a much bigger uh market but the key is not to trade out uh, you know, physical ounces for dollars when we didn't want dollars in the first place. I mean, I've been buying silver for the last 15 years simply because I've been concerned about the idea that governments and, and the Federal Reserve can print unlimited amount of money. I mean, we're going to run a $5 trillion deficit this year. The government's going to spend $10 trillion. Nearly half of the, of the United States economy is going to come from the government. This does not end well. And this is just the beginning. Wait until the ramifications of all these unemployment and bankruptcies and foreclosures start really happening after the election starts coming. God forbid we get a Biden administration that starts raising taxes on, you know, on whatever wealth is left. They're going to print even more. You know, the Republicans are talking about a tr another trillion dollars of uh, deficit spending that we don't have. Well, the Democrats want to do three point one trillion. So the way I look at it is silver is the best way of protecting your wealth outside uh, the system. 
you can take your wealth outside the uh, the banking system. You don't have to worry about the inflation because it's going to be it's going to be reflected in the price of it. And use silver as a means of uh, you know you know making 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 it through to the other side. And I, I don't quite know what that's going to be, but uh, you know I think silver is going to be the best place to be until then. Chris, what are your thoughts on being a borrower? in this environment with the inflation going out of control, maybe not something to, to the mm -hmm. degree of Venezuela or Zimbabwe, but uh, just hyper, uh, some sort of really high inflation. I mean, if you owe 150,000, yeah. $200,000 of debt and they mm -hmm. hyperinflate your currency and you know, all of a sudden now you're getting you. paid triple and quadruple what you made before because, but maybe your purchasing power still sucks. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good for the money that you need to pay off though, right? Yes. So a lot of uh, silver stackers kind of get in a twist about me with, with when it comes to debt. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, pay off your debt and then buy silver. I'm like, no. <laughs> um, debt, as long as it's, uh, you know, locked in and it's not a variable rate or, you know, a, a credit card debt. I mean, I certainly wouldn't want anybody having 24% credit card interest and thinking that they're going to, you know, go buy silver. But if, you're, if your debt is locked in like a mortgage, yeah, silver, don't pay off your, your mortgage, but stack silver because... Uh, just like in the Venezuelan example, if you know the if your mortgage in Venezuelan bolivars was three hundred thousand bolivars, um, you know, and now your ounce of silver is worth seven point two million uh, bolivars, you just paid off your mortgage with what a you know quarter ounce of silver. Um, that's what ends up happening. So um, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of paying off debt uh, to stack silver because uh, inflations benefit those that have debt and have real assets like silver. Uh, but does not benefit people who have paid off debt and do not have real assets. So um, it's a it's a game that I think a lot of people have to look at their own uh, sense of risk. Uh, I'm not one to encourage people to take on debt, but quite honestly, people have taken on you know hundreds of thousands of dollars in student loans on these you know diplomas that are worth nothing. Uh, people naturally go out and buy cars that depreciate worse than anything else, uh, houses, and you know wh what other consumer goods. Uh, but, you know, for physical silver at these prices, I mean, people have taken a lot of worse debt to buy other things that are worth less. So, you know, I, everybody's got to make their own judgment call. Yeah, it's definitely a balance and something you need to be comfortable with because nobody knows the timing exactly on how long this will be. And you can, of course, lose your assets by taking on debt, having a job change, having an income problem unable to service the debt and then lose everything, right? So, But one of the best things about silver is that, um, you know, regardless of whatever happens to the, the, uh, the housing market, silver allows you to take that wealth anywhere you want. You know, this is something that can be literally hidden for generations. If you think like a pirate, you know, you can do it whatever. But most people can't take their, uh, you know, move their house if, if, if things are bad. You can't really transport your wealth. Uh, if your money is inside of a bank and the bank go, goes bad or the actual currency itself goes bad, uh, you're really SOL. And then, and then how do we start over again? This is another thing I try to, to remind people. Um, the, the overall global economy is changing to uh, a more further concentration of wealth. Those people that are making a ton of money right now uh, you know, are going to be in charge of robotics and technology. Like most people really don't have the skills anymore to really create wealth themselves. You know, we used to have a very big labor pool uh, where we needed a lot of labor to go create all the manufactured goods. And that really helps sustain a middle class, but that's all getting destroyed right now. And it's, a sl you know, slowly being done. And I don't think most people are recognizing it. So this might be the last chance to transfer your labor and your wealth outside the system into a doom paradigm that will no longer benefit the average working man. Hmm. So in the average home, let's say costs $200,000, let's say the average person makes $50,000 a year. I think there's something mm -hmm. along those lines. Um, mm -hmm. That's four years of, of income to purchase a house. Now, do you think, in your opinion, with what w the world is about to see, that that's going to change? The amount of effort it's going to take in terms of work uh, you think it'll stay at around four years of annual income and in relation to 
what's going to happen to the dollar, mm-hmm. what's going to happen to the economy and hyperinflation. Because I just want to get your thoughts on, you know, do you believe real estate to be a store of wealth? Or do you no. think they're, it's going to collapse to maybe something where people can buy with one year's worth of income? Yeah, I think it's, it's so uh, for my silver stackers who listen to my channel, uh, the goal that I would be looking for is one ounce of silver for an acre of arable land. There's eight, eight billion arable acres of land above ground, and there's an es- only an estimated one to two billion ounces of physical silver, uh, which is actually less than that. Um, but yeah, housing prices right now are in a bubble because we're still in denial of what has actually happened uh, to the underlying economy. I mean, just think about New York City. New York City was this bastion. It's the, I mean, it's the most popular city in the United States. It's the, you know, where Wall Street is and Madison Avenue and, you know, all these bars and restaurants and, you know, millionaires buying $54 million mansions and stuff like that. With COVID now and what's, what's going on, like what's commercial real estate worth anymore? Like you have Amazon that's destroyed all of these commercial real estate. And then you have, you know, maybe the restaurants that are out there. I mean, two, I think half the restaurants in Manhattan are never going to open up again. Um, you know, and then all the jobs that are leaving, like, I I mean, they're talking about a a half a million people have already left Manhattan with no plans of ever coming back. Uh, then throw in de Blasio with, uh, you know, this BLM and, uh, defund the police and, you know, violence and graffiti and they're, they're putting homeless people and thing. I mean, it's literally going to destroy the value of all of Manhattan. And and that's going to be reflective of all the other cities out there, San Francisco and Chicago. Uh, these are failed city states. They're no longer, a viable thing. If you kind of look at it, like the cities were really like hardware uh, and the operating system was more debt and more uh, people coming into these centralized cities. And now that the, the uh, COVID has hit, even the biggest corporations that have built these huge complexes like Apple and Google, and they have these huge campuses, they're letting their people work from home. So, you know, what, what happens to just real estate markets out there? And then, you know, all the small businesses, because they've been shut down, I mean, these guys are going to be devastated. So there's going to be a plethora of all this commercial real estate. We've already been watching these malls uh, collapse. That's just a real estate market. That's the commercial real estate market. When that gets reflected into the real jobs and people being able to, you know, afford their homes, uh, I don't see how it would get any better. So I would imagine that the prices of, and then, and then the local governments, they're going to start taxing, uh, you know, the, the properties because that's all that's left. Uh, and it's going to make it even a, a worse situation. So my my suggestion is, number one, if you live in any major metropolitan area, please get out now before it turns into a humanitarian crisis, because this is what's going to happen before the dollar crisis happens. Once we have a dollar crisis and, you know, potentially we have, you know, outright, you know, wars and, you know, more disruptions and stuff, uh, it's going to be harder and harder for those cities to maintain power and electricity and sense of order and, you know, certainly the, the capital appreciation that's been built up in there. Um, and then anybody who's smart moves outside the cities. And, and uh, I think the, the major metropolitan areas are going to be the absolute worst places to be when the dollar goes down. Yeah, I have uh, some real estate uh, in Florida and I've been following that uh, specifically. Mm-hmm. I have some real estate in different parts of the country, but uh, mm-hmm. as far as uh, Florida is, is, in particular, I have some tenants that have not made a single payment. They were late already going into yeah. the crisis and then they got the moratorium. So, I mean, they're banking months after month after month of yeah. not making the rent payment and they got another month because it was all supposed to end in August where the eviction was supposed to happen. And these people were taking advantage. I mean, they're getting the stimulus payments and, you know, a lot of things. And they're like, oh, you know what? Let's ride it out and make the best of it. And then you take the hit, (laughs) you know? like That's right. That's right. So that's, and so I, but I think about it. I step back and I go, man, you know, how is it even possible for them to, to make a, a, all a back payment on all this money that they owe. I mean, thousands of dollars now. Uh, and that's what, that's what we're seeing. Like that's a micro scale of yep. what this whole entire economy has been experiencing over the last few months. And I just wonder what this fallout is going to look like here as we go into September, October. I mean, uh, the only thing I can think of is just these spending packages that are just going to continue to string this along. But, How long can that go on for? Well, it's going to go on until it doesn't. And that's what I've been preparing for. I don't know how this ends or where it does, but I definitely know that silver is going to be the only place to left standing at the end of the day. 
Uh, you know, you can walk down all the asset classes out there. You know, you can go from uh, derivatives and cryptos, you know, these kind of amorphous, uh, you know, kind of niche markets uh, to the stock market, to the bond market. I think 60% of all the bonds are yielding negative uh, rates. Like that alone is a, a screaming case for gold and silver. Why would you own uh, a bond that, you know, you have to pay to own? Uh, and then, you know, you worry about just the overall printing of all these, uh, all the money out there. Um, the very currencies itself, I mean, they're talking about the dollar depreciating 60% against what? Other failed currencies out there? Um, that seems to me the, like, the only places to be are gold and silver. And like I laid out earlier in the interview, uh, when you look at the fundamentals of silver over gold, why would you even own an ounce of gold? I own one ounce of gold. That's it for display purposes only. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but I have all my m money in physical silver and I know I'm highly biased. I've you know, I'm uh, probably the ultimate silver bug out there since I've been pounding the table for as long as I have. Um, but I believe that physical silver is going to be the only place to be at the end of the day. It's kind of like the eye of the needle. You know, all the other wealth is going to have to find a way of, of uh, mark to market. And, and I just don't see how uh, with governments, you know, spending at least the United States spending $10 trillion. I mean, we, you know, the Republicans used to rail against Obama for trillion dollar deficits. Fuck, they're nothing compared to what we're going on now. We got $5 trillion deficits. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, and I've been talking about this with different individuals, uh, you know, silver's leveraged upside to gold. And my goodness, your your thoughts on silver's upside is is impressive. And I, and I mm -hmm. love hearing the analysis and, and you make the case for it. But is there something that you sell into to, um, I mean, I, again, I know you love silver, but at yeah. some point it goes so high. Do you put it into something that maybe you think might be less volatile? Uh, the conventional wisdom might be, hey, I still want to own precious metals. Silver is your leveraged exposure. When silver goes yep. to 30 to 1, 15 to 1, I'm going to sell my silver and buy gold. Uh, where so my it, yeah, my, my, my exit strategy, and I've been thinking about this for 15 years, uh, my exit strategy is to realize that the current paradigm is going to fail, uh, that silver at some point is going to be worth tremendously more relative. Um, like in the video I did today, uh, I talked about how the Dow to gold ratio in 1980 was one. Uh, one ounce of gold cost $850, and the Dow was actually $850. Um, so I, I look at uh, valuations based off not dollar terms. Like I don't care if silver goes to a thousand or whatever. I want to know what that is relative without the dollar to gold, to uh, to the Dow, to to real estate, to other pre other assets out there. Um, and my plan is essentially that when silver becomes overvalued and that the rest of the world wakes up to the silver story, you have to realize we are such a small little teeny community that even notices silver. I mean, even gold is very rarely mentioned in major media uh, and silver never gets mentioned. But wait until silver gets past $50, $100 and, and we start getting major media that actually look at uh, the price of silver. It's going to explode exponentially. Um, but my exit strategy is at some point I will want to get out of silver, but I'm never going to sell my silver. At some point, what I would like to do is uh, when silver is valued a lot more, I would like to borrow against my silver at a highly appreciated level uh, because I think there's going to be a permanent revaluation of silver because it's been manipulated for so long uh, that the rest of the humanity is going to start valuing silver at a much higher level permanently uh, because it is a depleting rare uh, you know, precious resource that needs to be have a higher value to bring on more uh, mining supply and wiser use of it instead of us throwing it away the, the way we are. But I would like to borrow against my silver and then buy, you know, these depreciated assets, you know, buy houses and, and uh, businesses and technology and labor uh, that are, you know, have been absolutely devastated by the economic crisis and then, you know, build, uh, you know, you'll have uh, income producing property. So you can borrow against your silver, which is highly appreciated. Um, whether we have silver banks or, you know, they have these crypto funds that are, you know, you can back it with crypto or whatever, uh, but you monetize your silver, you don't actually sell it. So then therefore you're also, uh, you know, potentially even uh, avoiding any sales tax or income tax against the highly appreciated silver. When you borrow against it, it's not a taxable event. Borrow against your silver and buy these depreciated assets, you know, businesses and local houses and stuff that will actually, you know, yield income from there. Uh, and at a much lower level, you know, because you'll probably have PEs, you know, in the single digits at that point. 
uh, and then those assets will pay back your silver loan. And then, you know, potentially in one to two or five years, you have all your silver and income producing properties or income producing, you know, businesses uh, that are now at the, you know, starting to grow again, because we are going to grow again, but we definitely need a complete washout. We haven't had the uh, the, the, the cleansing of any of these recessions. We keep getting bailed out. We need the washout. So all these bad investments and bad actors get you know punished. Uh, we haven't felt it from the tech bubble. We didn't feel it from the housing bubble. We didn't feel it uh, even now. We're still getting bailed out. So I think there's going to be a massive washout. And silver's going to be the best way of transferring your wealth from one side to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, a absolutely. Um, Chris, when you when you speak about Venezuela or, or Zimbabwe or Weimar Germany, mm -hmm. uh, these seem to be isolated events. Now, when it comes to what we're seeing right now with the U.S., it's we're in so much more of a global uh, situation. Yeah. What the U.S. is doing, the whole entire world is doing. And you mm -hmm. alluded to that. I mean, the U.S. dollar falling against a basket of other failing currencies. Do you see that happening on a global basis, this sort of washout, or does the U.S. ultimately, does it happen here in a more isolated situation, and does the wealth transfer move elsewhere around the world? How do you see that playing out? So I, I see the dollar and all these other currencies, uh, you know, slowly falling relative to each other because they're all printing money, so it's probably not going to be as obvious uh, and, and like I said, as we see in Venezuela, but I do think it's going to form exactly in s the silver market. Uh, so we've already seen in uh, the July uh, delivery uh, period in the COMEX, the record amount of physical silver and gold being delivered. I mean, there was huge uh, disparities even from March uh, between the London uh, Bullion Market Association and the COMEX of, of delivered gold. Um, and what I think what's going to end up happening is that I think uh, inside the dollar collapse and all these global currencies that the precious metal markets are going to absolutely skyrocket. Uh, and they're the ones that are going to reflect the overall uh, inflation and currency, uh, currency depreciation. Rel and, and I don't think it's going to be as obvious as like Venezuela with the you know, 7.4 million bolivars for an ounce of silver. Um, but I think that we're going to see massive dollar depreciation relative to all these other currencies, but it's going to most be uh, seen in uh, uh, food and fuel and certainly the precious metals and especially physical silver, where I think the, sil the rise in the silver price is literally going to be the greatest transference of wealth that we've ever seen in throughout history. You have to realize, Daniel, this has been a, a criminally manipulated market since the crime of 1873 when the banksters demonetize silver. That's what the Wizard of Oz is actually all about. The yellow brick road represented the gold standard and Dorothy's shoes inside the Wizard of Oz book was silver. Um, and silver is our way back out of this. So they've been criminally manipulating the price of silver down. Uh, they demonetize uh, silver in the crime of 1873 in the United States. They demonetize uh, India. Uh, the British Empire stole $54 trillion out of India. And even two opium wars against China had directly to do with China owning 25% of the world's silver, despite not having any uh, mines because China was industrious uh, citizens uh, accumulated silver, but didn't use it to go buy uh, British finished goods. So since they've taken the silver out of our coins, out of our money, that has what's given rise to this financialization. The very idea that banks are the largest industry out there shows how far off of humanity is. They don't produce any value. They create Ponzi schemes. They you know, create digital illusions of wealth. They find another sucker for every day for another asset class. But that only came about when they got us off of the anchor of what gold and silver, you know, once provided. There's another statistic your audience can go look at, US, usdebtclock.org. Uh, they have the uh, dollar to silver ratio and the gold to silver ratio. The dollar to silver ratio back in 1913 was $2, $2 for every ounce of silver that was out there. Right now it's at over $4,000 in newly printed money relative to all the silver that's mined in the world today. So just using US M2, we're spending, we're creating $4,000 of newly printed money, just the United States relative to all the silver in, mined in the world. Now that chart does not include that the silver has 50% uh, of mining capacity has been off. 
which would naturally double that to $8,000 relative to all the silver that's mined in the world and does not include China or the EU or Japan or the rest of the world. So we're, we're potentially looking at the world is printing close to 10,000, if not $20,000 of newly printed money relative to every single ounce of silver that comes out of the ground. I mean, if this isn't a screening uh, you know, way of saying, hey, I want to trade all these newly printed dollars for these very rare ounces of silver that's not been properly um, priced in the market. I, I don't know what, uh, what else will. So true. So true, Chris. Yeah, and it's tough for people. Uh, it's hard for us to psycho psychologically watch what happened in the price of gold, watch what happened in the price of silver, and feel comfortable buying at these prices, you know, wanting to hold, hold back for a pullback. Uh, yeah. And we saw that today, actually. Uh, mm -hmm. But interesting uh, in this environment. But in the end, in the end game, this is nothing compared to where silver uh, and gold, in my opinion, can go from here. So um, 